Jesus Christ. We are, we are, we are the temple of the living God. We are, we are, we are the temple of the living God. We are, we are, we are the temple of the living God. We are, we are, we are the temple of the living. Yes, we indeed are the temple of the living God. Our bodies are dedicated as a holy vessel unto the Almighty God. That's and, right. You know, th even that is a scripture, that song we just sang is a scripture in 1 Corinthians, where it says, Know ye not that your bodies are the temple of the living God. And God lives on the inside of us. Amen. That's God the most amazing thing. And that's actually an honor mm. for God to live on the inside of us. And we possess the Holy Spirit living yeah. on the inside of us. That's right. And we've been talking about rising up with confidence because you can know that when God lives on the inside of you, no matter what situation it might be, you can still stand up boldly in the face of life. Amen. Amen. And we took a scripture from Philippians 1, 6, where it says that we are confident of the very thing that God who began a good work in us, He will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. And we spoke about the first part where being confident, not in just ourselves, not in just the circumstances around us, but confident in the Lord. And the latter part of that scripture says, in the work that He has begun in us. You know, God has begun a good work in us. And He has also begun a spiritual work in us. And throughout the scriptures, it talks about, you know, that we are really spirit beings mm. and we're not just flesh and blood. And the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us. That's why we can, you know, have this assurance yeah. that, you know, like the song says, we are the temple of the living God. So no longer are we living to ourselves any longer. Yeah. We are actually living with somebody on the inside of us mm. who's guiding us, who's leading us into all truth. Mm. That's the first step is knowing who you are in Christ Jesus. And I, mean, I mean, that truth should really change us. The way we live life and do things is, who lives on the inside of me? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. That's who Jesus sent yeah. to us, to be with us, to be mm. our comforter, to be our guide, yeah. and to protect us. Mm. And, um, you know, Philippians 2.13, talking again about the work that God has begun in us, he says, in Philippians 2.13, it is God or the Spirit of God who works in us, both to will and to do of His good pleasure. So we are not just, you know, living on this earth, you know, to please ourselves mm. or to please people. Yeah. It is God who is working in and through mm. us 
to do the good work that he started. That means we don't live life on our own. Mm. I mean, this scripture says God is working in you to do his will and his pleasure. Yeah. And God's will is not bad or boring. Not it's a all. will that's so exciting and it makes you want to live life every day to the fullest. Yeah. It says that, you know, the scripture as we're reading, it says that he wants to, you know, do his will and do his good pleasure. Good pleasure. Not his bad pleasure. His mm. good pleasure. Mm. He has good things in store for you. Yeah. You know, that's a good, really good scripture there. And, um, you know, we said the Spirit of God lives on the inside of us. Yeah. And that can only happen once you receive Jesus Christ mm. as your Lord and Savior. Yeah. Before that, you know, we have the Spirit of the world living mm. on the inside of us. Yeah. And it causes us to be children of disobedience. In the scriptures in Ephesians, it talks about the Spirit of the world. You know, it's a compelling spirit. Yeah. It's a forceful spirit. It just makes you do things that you can't really control. Yeah. Sometimes you do things and you don't realize it, but it's because of the spirit working on the inside of you that's, you know, putting these thoughts and desires mm. and but, maybe yeah. even out of peer pressure. Mm. And because everybody else is doing it, I should do the same thing. Yeah. And but the spirit of God, he leads us and yeah. he guides us into all truth. You know, I've heard it say that the Holy Spirit is like a gentleman. Yeah. He's, um, he gently leads you in life. He doesn't try to force things on you. No. You know, he'll say things to you and um, he wants you to obey him, but he's not going to force and you. He wants us to obey him because it's for our good. It's for our good. He will lead us only into the right things. It's like the scripture says, his good pleasure. Yeah. I mean, that makes me excited. God has something good for me. Mm. He wants to do good things in my life. Yeah. And the first step is knowing who you are in Christ. Yeah. And we need to also know, like I said before, that we are really spirit beings. Yeah. And once we learn that truth, we will start living out of our inmost being. Mm. We will not just see ourselves, you know, as weak, weak people or, you know, just flesh and blood living on this earth. But we will start living out of the spirit of God. Right. And you know, you know, as we've been discussing, we, we saw examples of the disciples and Paul. Mm. We see in the midst of threatening situations and being in prison, these people rose up with confidence. They, yeah. prayed, they prayed prayers of boldness, which caused them to really strengthen their inner man. And it didn't matter whatever life brought, they were just always on the top. Yeah, and always. There's a nice you know, thing that mentioned in the book of John. There was a man that came to Jesus. His name was Nicodemus. Let's just go to the book of John chapter 3. And this man, he was one of the religious leaders at the time. And he came to Jesus by night. And he wanted to know, you know, these things that Jesus was doing. Mm. How are you able to do all these miraculous things? I wonder why he came by night. Yeah, you know, probably, yeah. probably because of the crowds or, yeah. you know, he was afraid to get noticed by the Pharisees. But Jesus didn't mind. Yeah. Jesus, Jesus didn't throw him out and say, you know, I'm done for the day. My work is done. Yeah. My work is no. only like from this time to this time. Yeah. He accepted anybody who came. Yeah. Even if you come in the middle of the night, yeah. Jesus is waiting for you. He is. So he, this man Nicodemus in John chapter 3, he comes to Jesus and he says, I know that you are a teacher come from God, for no man can do the miracles that you do except God be with you. And Jesus tells this man, I say unto you, verily, verily, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So Jesus told Nicodemus, you have to be born again if you are to experience the things of the kingdom of God. Mm. That's really the first step in receiving this confidence yeah. is being born again. And you might ask, what does it mean to be born again? Well, to be born again really means, first of all, you accept Jesus' work on the cross. You receive that blood that he shed for you on Calvary. Mm. And then you say, Jesus, I want you to be Lord of my life come and fill me and from this day forward I make you my Lord and Savior yeah. that's how simple it is to be born again mm. it's not some you know I gotta climb this many steps or you know climb a mountain mm. or something it doesn't and mean that that word born again actually even Nicodemus was confused because mm. he says how can a man be born when he's old can he enter the second time into his mother's womb yeah. and be born I mean born again yeah you know that literally if you look at it like that it's like how can I jump into my mother's womb again? Yeah. You know, it's silly. 
But Jesus says that's not what it means. Yes, he so explains it in, in verse 5. He says, yeah. Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Hmm. Or he cannot enjoy the benefits of the kingdom of God. And it says, That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. And in John chapter 1, it talks about, you know, how we are born into this world out of the will of man. Mm. You know, we didn't, by choice. Yes. We were not born by choice. We didn't want to be mm. born. It was um, the choice of, you know, man yeah. that we were born. We but didn't have a choice into which family we were born into. Yeah, that's right. But, you know, you can make a choice to be born of God. That's right. That's, that's a choice of each individual. And that's a good choice. It's a good choice. It's the best choice you can ever make. And that is to be born into the family of God. That's right. And so that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. And so then Jesus goes on to explain to him, that's how we are born of the Spirit of God. That's what it means to be born again. Yeah, and, and you may be asking, you know, what is this born again thing? What does it mean? And, you know, Nicodemus here, he had that same question. Yeah. You know, how can I enter into my mother's womb the second time? Mm. But Jesus said, you know, that's not what I'm saying. It's to be born of your spirit. Because all of us, we come into this world with a, with a spirit that is, you know, a nature. It's like a, you know, a dead nature, I would say. Yeah. A nature that is not, you know, in tune to the voice of God. But, you know, when we get born again, our spirit changes and God comes to live on the inside. There's kind of a light that takes place. Inside, you know, you start to, you know, walk in peace and in joy. That's the change that, you know, being born again yeah. does. And, you know, another really important thing is, um, you know, after you've been born again, is to know that you can be accepted in God's sight. Yeah. You know, the song that we were singing, you know, it mentions we overcome the world. We fight the fight of faith. We stand in victory through the blood of Christ. All these benefits come to you when you receive Jesus as Lord of your life. Mm -hmm. No longer do you have to let life's pressures control you. You are now rising up with confidence and overcoming them. Yeah. And really, another important thing being born again is to know that you can come to God and be accepted. Yeah. Because, you know, a lot of us, we feel like, you know, I'm not accepted into, you know, the circle of men or, you know, into... Um, I guess what everybody society. society yeah and things like that but in Jesus Christ you can know that you are accepted and he will never reject us he will never reject you never he never rejected anybody who came to him mm. we see that anybody who came to Jesus they were either healed or they were you know their lives were changed and things happened to them because he was a God who accepted them mm. and I want to take you to that verse uh, scripture in Ephesians. Let's just see that in Ephesians 1. You know, it gets me excited knowing that God accepts me. Yeah. That is the most amazing thing. And yeah. the way you can know it on the inside of you when, when you're accepted by God, you'll start hearing His voice, you'll start, um, you know, doing what He says. It will be just so natural for you to communicate with God. Mm. It's not like, God, you're far away and I'm down here. And that's the family part of God. Yeah. You know? In this world, sometimes families don't accept certain family members. Yeah. And, you know, they regret why certain people were born. Mm. But in God's family, God accepts you just as you are so that He can make you all that He wants you to be. And I like the line, just as you are. Just as you are. You can just but come. But He doesn't yeah. leave you just he does yeah, as you are. Exactly. He makes you somebody even better than you could imagine. Amen. You know, that's, makes that's you good powerful. News. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see that in Ephesians 1, verse 5 and 6. It says, Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein, this is the part that I want to come to, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved. There's that word accepted. God has accepted you into His family. Mm -hmm. Even before you were born, God had a plan for you. You know, he, he saw you and He made you so special, uniquely the way you are. And He says, I have accepted you. Mm -hmm. That's what He says here. Verse Notice that. Says, yeah. You know, according as He has chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not just thought of by accident. Right. 
Jesus says in this scripture, he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Mm. So even us who are born again and spirit filled and who have received Jesus Christ, we didn't receive Jesus by accident. Right. It says God has chosen us, mm. you know, and it's a good thing to be chosen by God. It is. You know, it's like God saying, I pick you, mm. I pick you into my team. It's like, you know, um, you know, when you're selected into something, you immediately come home running and say, I was chosen for that. I was selected. Yeah. It's yeah. especially when it's something that you wanted to get into. Yeah. You're just so excited to be chosen. Yeah. And another great excitement that you can have is knowing that God has chosen you. Yeah. I mean, you. Not just anybody else, but He's chosen you. Mm. When you accept Him as Lord and Savior of your life, you are chosen in His family. And there are a lot of good benefits in God's family. Right. You know, He doesn't, like we said, leave you as you are. Mm. But He heals you, He saves you. Right. And He makes you righteous. He cleans you up. Mm. And He gives us angels yeah. to protect us. Definitely. There are benefits in God's family. So many benefits. And if you meditate on the book of Ephesians, you begin to see the benefits that God has for you. Yeah. And right now in this study, we are talking about being accepted and having confidence that God accepts you, mm -hmm. you know, just as you are. Mm -hmm. But when you come just as you are, He changes you into just as He wants you to be. Doesn't make yeah. sense, you know, as just as He wants you to be. But that's Not in a truth. controlling sense. Not though. in a controlling. Yeah. yeah. It's very, it's gentle, it's mild and it's, it's loving. That's yeah. what it is. That's His Spirit who leads us mm. and guides us. So. We're talking about being accepted in God's sight. So how did you get accepted into God's sight? Let's look at that in Hebrews 10. And we're kind of touching different scriptures because we want you to know that in the Word of God, there's so much that talks about being loved, being accepted. You mm. know, it's not just a book of rules, do this and do that. It's a, a lot about love, acceptance, and being um, in the family of God. Yeah. So let's see that but in one Hebrews. Of the meanings yeah. of the word accepted in the beloved is to be fond of. God mm. is fond of us. Yeah. And he is well pleased with us. And it says he loves us dearly. That's why we are called children of God. Mm. And children are accepted. And another meaning is also to welcome. He welcomes us into his family. Right. That that is so amazing. You can just meditate on that for hours. God accepts me. He loves me. Mm. I mean, he has chosen me before He made the world. He was thinking of us before He made all this beauty. Mm. He, he loves us just us. as much as He loves Jesus. Right. Jesus, He sent, uh, God sent Jesus into the world, His only begotten Son, mm. to pay the price for our sins. And He loves Jesus so much, but He loves us as much as He loves Jesus. That's right. That's why He, how made, he, us, he yeah. made us joint heirs with Jesus. Mm. That's how you get accepted, is by mm. receiving the blood that he has shed for you on the cross. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at that in Hebrews 10. And we'll start reading from verse 19. So we're asking ourselves the question, how did I become accepted? Let's see, it's given here in Hebrews. Hebrews 10, we'll read from verse 19 to 22. It says, having therefore boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he has consecrated for us through the veil that is to say his flesh and we'll kind of skip on to verse 22 let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith mm. having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water now the two words that stand out from these verses are number one is having boldness and secondly, drawing near unto the presence of God. Mm. So when you receive the blood, and that is the way you get accepted, is by saying, Lord, I receive your blood. I receive what you have done for me on the cross. That's the first step into being accepted in God's mm. sight. And then you can have this assurance. Now I can come boldly to the throne of grace. Number one, I received your blood. I received forgiveness of sins. Mm. And now I can come boldly and stand righteously in your sight. Yeah. And you know, for those of you out there, maybe you've never made Jesus Lord of your life. And today you can do that. And maybe we can pray, you know, together. And I'm gonna pray and Shalom is gonna repeat after me and you can say this prayer along with us. Let's pray. Let's say, 
O God in heaven, O God in heaven, I come before you, I come before you in Jesus name, in Jesus name. I ask you, I ask you to wash me, to wash me and cleanse me with your blood and cleanse me with your blood. I receive, I receive the gift, the gift that you have provided for me, that you have provided for me on the cross, on the cross. I receive Jesus, I receive Jesus as Lord of my life, as Lord of my life. Come into my heart, come into my heart. Be my very best friend, be my very best friend from this day forward. From from this day forward I'm gonna live my life for you I'm gonna live my life for you in Jesus name in Jesus name amen amen